Hello, it's Josh from ServerPro here, and today I'll be explaining the purpose of the server.properties file on your Minecraft server and showing you some cool things that you can do with it. The server.properties file is the file that stores all of your server settings, including options to set which world is going to be used, set the seed, disable the nether, and set your difficulty to peaceful. To find this file, firstly navigate to the My Servers page on our website and click Control Panel next to your server. From there, if you are using a game server plan, click the link available on your dashboard or, if you are using a VPS, select your Minecraft service from the service switcher, then open the Files tab and finally select the server.properties file. If you are on a VPS plan and don't yet have a Minecraft server set up, click the I in the top right corner or the link in the description and we'll help you get that set up and running. Keep in mind that there are a few differences between the server.properties file on a Java edition server and on a Bedrock edition server, so click the link in the description for a full list of what options are available to you. In this video we'll be looking at the server.properties file for a 1.17.1 Java edition server. Now let's take a look at a few useful options that you might want to adjust for your server. Firstly, the spawn protection, which is by default set to 16. This property controls how many chunks around spawn are protected, such that non-operator players cannot modify any blocks in that area. You can disable this by setting it to 0. Next, we've got max tick time. If you've ever contacted our support team about reducing lag on your server, this is likely one of the properties we will ask you to change. This setting defines how long a single tick may take before the watchdog shuts down the server. Setting this to minus one will disable the watchdog altogether and is often the required value for forge servers. The next interesting option available to you is sync chunk writes which is enabled by default. The property allows you to choose whether you want data for multiple chunks to be written at the same time, that is for them to be written synchronously. At Server Pro, we would recommend leaving this enabled, however if you are experiencing lag, you could try setting this to false. The Player Idle Timeout option allows you to set how long a player can be AFK until they are kicked from the server. By default, this is set to 0, meaning that it's disabled, but you could change this to 5, and players would be kicked from the server after 5 minutes of inactivity. The Entity Broadcast Range Percentage property allows you to define as a percentage how far away mobs will be rendered. If this is set to the default of 100, they will be rendered as normal. The value you enter is in relation to this. So, if you were to enter 50, mobs would only be rendered up to half the usual distance, or if you were to enter 200, they would render up to twice as far. The Enable Status option allows you to set whether you wish for the server to appear as online in the multiplayer menu. Let's say for example that you run a whitelisted SMP server and you don't want it to be obvious if someone has found your server's IP address or hostname. By setting Enable Status to false, thus disabling status, the server will appear as offline, even if it will still accept connections. This shouldn't be considered a security measure, but rather an additional layer of defence. The Prevent Proxy Connections property allows you to block all connections that are made over a proxy or VPN. This can be quite useful if you're having issues with bot attacks, griefers and the like, but please keep in mind that this can cause connection problems for some players, even if they are not using a proxy service. It's also worth noting that there are many legitimate reasons for using a VPN service. It is, however, of course, completely up to you to decide whether this is a security feature that you'd like to implement. The last option that we'll look at exclusively is the Use Native Transport property, which enables performance optimizations for servers hosted in a Linux environment, just like your server. By default, this is enabled, and we would recommend not changing this, as these optimizations can make a very significant difference to the player's experience. To apply any changes that you've made to your server.properties file, make sure that you firstly save the file by clicking the blue Save Changes button and then restart your server. Though we have covered a few of the more interesting options available in the server.properties file, please keep in mind that this is by no means exhaustive 
and some of the more common options that you would want to change, for example adding a resource pack to your server, already have a dedicated video on our channel. Make sure to go and check those out. For a list of all available properties for both Java and Bedrock Edition servers, along with descriptions, please visit the Minecraft wiki which is linked in the description. We hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to click the like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you never miss a video from Server Pro. If you need any help, please contact our support team. I've been Josh, cheers.